What's going on, everybody? It's Anthony Russo. First episode of Blunt Force Discussion. Pretty excited to uh, to be here, be in studio, and shooting what is our first episode. So it, it, it's going to be fun. It's going to be something different each week, uh, but obviously you can take the initials of Blunt Force Discussion realize it's BFDs. So we are going to be having BFDs on this show every week, and uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun. And what Blunt Force Discussion means is we are having a conversation that is going to go above and beyond the typical fluff conversations that you hear on most podcasts. I call it a Joe Rogan style long format podcast. It's going to be fun and we're going to, we're going to enjoy ourselves. So in the first episode, no better person to have than somebody that is a comedian, a influencer, TV host, author, and musician. That's a lot of things. That's a lot of, it's a mouthful. I feel like it's uh, Rocky where I'm introducing Apollo. Chad Prather is our guest (laughs) on the show. Chad, what's going on? Man, truly no better guest than me. I I appreciate you having me. This could be the first and last. We don't know. We (laughs) might set the bar so high. So high. People always ask me, they say, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, I never could be satisfied with just one thing. So I just had to do it all. Valid point. It's, so, it's a long list. What do you like to do the most out of all That's that? That's a good question. I think it depends on what day it is. Uh, and, you know, I get bored really fast. Yeah. You know, a- after a while of doing something, I'm ready for something else. You know, I'm like a goose. I wake up in a new world every day. And so it's just kind of whichever way the wind blows. I just like to be busy. That's my thing. At the end of the day, man, I'm a hustler. Yeah. I'm a hustler. I'm a salesperson. And I, I, I always have been that. I'm a people person. I'm energized by people. So I love being on stage doing live shows. Yeah. Uh, there's no better just just positive energy than being around people that are happy and laughing and having a good time. And so I think probably put me on a stage with a good audience, and that's my favorite thing. Yeah. So you uh, you you actually just did some work. You just opened for Blake Shelton, I believe. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So we've been friends with Troy Aikman for a few years, doing a lot of things, and you know we got to know Troy and started helping him with some of the things that he does for benefits and stuff. Been to his house, doing some stuff, you know, playing a little music, and and pretty crazy that that's a whole new sphere, right? That's a big. That's a circle that's a very interesting right. group of. That's real influencers there. Yeah. So he invites us to come up. You know, he's from Henrietta, Oklahoma, and so he raises money to send kids to college and stuff. And so that was like one of the biggest events I think Henrietta's ever had. Twelve thousand people showed up for. Yeah. You know, we had some Texas music artists. You know, some some of these. uh, Maybe there'll be something one day. Pat Green. You know, Wade Bowen, Josh Abbott, and uh, Stony Larue, and of course Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani, who's now Gwen Shelton. Right. They got married. So yeah. uh, And then there was us. Yeah, it was us. So did you did you do comedy and music? No, we just did music. Just music. We just did music. You didn't even throw in like one little joke. Every now and then, I can't help but do it. You put a microphone in front of me. There's going to be something a little twisted off. Yeah. So we actually because we do three part harmony. Uh, it's myself, Steve Helms, who's been doing Texas music for 35 years with the Steve Helms Band. Ben McPherson, who's a who's a fiddle prodigy. I mean, he's 26 years old, been playing since he was three. Yeah. Uh, we do a three part harmony and. Um, he, uh, at the end of the deal, we did a three-part harmony of um, Gwen Stefani, the, the old, hey, baby, hey, yeah. baby, hey. Yeah. Now, I don't even know the name of that song, yeah. whatever it was. But Nor it was, should you as a man. It was fun. Regardless. It was fun. <laughs> we were like, let's demean ourselves a little bit and have fun with it. And just wound up, she, was, she came and she played. So, so you've been doing the, uh, the comedy tour also outside of that. So, what's, yeah. so you got, you've been doing comedy for a long time, and, and we're going to get into kind of the, your background, and then we're going to talk about some current event issues. And by the way, if you're watching this right now, see, this is the first episode. What's the, I probably should ask you this before. Which camera? Because I'm like, okay, I look like I'm about to have a, a stroke or a seizure because I'm like <laughs> looking over here. Um, so if you're watching on WeBeam TV, uh, possibly Ops Lens as well, Thank you for joining us. If you're watching on any of the social medias, whether it's Rumble, YouTube, et cetera, please share this out there. And then, of course, on our podcast network, share with your friends because this is episode one. And if we want to have more than four or five episodes, we need your friends to, to watch. So, comedy. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, was that? What, what's what you say? You know, you, have, you do a couple of different things. What's your. Why comedy? What what got you into that? To I, you start? know, it was, it was weird because I had the uh, I had the uh, yeah biscuit. If y'all hear in the background, that is my little three pounds of terror dog. She is protecting the world through this uh, the glass of this incredible studio. People are walking past, and I may have to grab her in a little while. She's adorable, straighten her though. out. She's a cute dog. Listen, I, I discovered that women. I'm a single guy. Women like men with money, and they like puppies. And I'm broke, so I just keep getting puppies. Right. 
Uh, no, I was doing, you know, I, I've always kind of been a witty person, and I still don't consider myself necessarily a comic, but I, um, it, my friends that are comedians, they tell me to stop saying that, but um, I, I've always looked at the world through a humorous lens, and so when things went viral for me years ago, I was doing a television show on a cable network, and um, I wound up going viral for sitting in my truck and, and just talking to the camera. And I had a friend of mine who said, man, you got some pretty funny stuff. Why don't you sell tickets to that and have, actually do live shows? I want to invite you in the car, in the truck? Yeah, I was That'd like, you know, what do I do? Like, you know, what, what do I do? One pull VIP a, right yeah, there. Pull a, pull a truck into the studio or into a theater. <laughs> and he said, you know, I said, well, I don't really do comedy. He said, I don't care if you do comedy or not. He said, just if people buy tickets, it won't matter, right? It won't matter. He can bring her over here to me. I'll get her straightened out. Come here, Biscuit. <laughs> You're protecting the world, aren't you? <laughs> so there she is. For those of you watching, there you go. That's my baby right there. I, it may be just be me and Biscuit, you know. It's, I, I, I it like be, it. But the rest of rest of my life, this is my relationship. Hey, me and Biscuit. Uh, they talk a lot less. And I was than... sitting there this morning, and I was like, Biscuit, it's me and you against the world. And, and then I realized she'd eat me if I was dead. <laughs> so uh, I don't know that she loves me with the same level of affection. But no, you know, comedy has been great. So I, I, I never wanted to dishonor the craft of comedy. I wanted to make sure that I was doing it justice, right? Yeah. I wasn't just a, you know, social media influencer that, you know, went up there and like, hey, look at me, that kind of thing. Because a yeah, lot yeah. of them do that, yeah. you know, and it's just to sell tickets, and I didn't want to do that. So I've worked really hard over the years to craft a true comedic right. vibe, you know, and, and do it because... You know, I, I didn't want to be disrespectful. I kind of came into comedy backwards. Most guys, you know, they start in the comedy clubs, and then maybe they go to theaters, and then they get a big social media presence, and they wind up with a television show. I was opposite. I had a television show, got a social media presence, started doing theaters that were real big, and then wound up doing comedy clubs just because I'd never done them, and I wanted to do them. So yeah. uh, I did everything exactly backwards. Yeah. And I didn't have to go and, like, dig in the trenches to build a comedy career. I kind of had a built-in audience because of the social media stuff. Yeah, that's So I, I was pretty I, blessed with that. I did the backwards thing too. I mean, it's interesting to hear you also say like you're you're broken. You have all these different <laughs> things because really, if I'm at the beginning of this one-on-one -on -one podcast thing, I don't think things look very good for me in the future. But that <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But I so I've been the host for NCAA college championships yeah. uh, for years. So I've been in front of twenty thousand, thirty thousand, even up to seventy thousand at the Georgia Dome. And then I went into motivational speaking, yeah. where you start in a room of like seven. Or right. people say because I've done stand up, I've done uh, uh, a lot of the um, just small, like literally open mics. Right. I get more stressed out in front of eight people. Yeah. And my heart's beating out of my chest than 70,000. 100%. I'm so the same I, way. I'm the backwards. I'm the back. Because it's less personal. Yeah. Where the other one, it's like, oh, you're just judging. Yeah. Everybody's I've always judging. looked at audiences this way. You know, but I don't, I've never had stage fright. I, I, you know, I, when I was, you know, when I was young, I used to go speak at churches and different events and stuff. Because I traveled all over the world and people wanted me to come and tell their stories. And uh, it was somewhat motivational, but also humorous. And so people wanted me to come back because they were like, hey, well, he's the funny guy that makes us feel good, you know? Yeah. And, and so I'd go to these places and talk to seven or eight people. My thing has always been that if, uh, if I could talk to one person, I can talk to thousands, right? right? And so for me, it was, um, uh, I just kind of look at whether it's eight people or 8,000, that's one individual I'm having a conversation with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and like, it's a different environment. Like if I go do a theater with 3000 people in it, I'm talking to a black mass, right? right. Because the stage the lights light. are hitting you. But then you're in a comedy club and you can like put your foot out and hit their chicken fingers because they're eating right in front of you, you know? <laughs> and so the, the crowd response is immediate right yeah. there. So it's kind of weird how that works. But I, again, I like people. I, I'm not. I, I'm not the uh, the depressed, introverted comic that hates his life. Right. Most of them are. I, true story. This is kind of therapy the for them. The they got to get it out, right? Me, I'm just like, I just like everybody. Yeah. And people don't think I do, but because I, yeah. I get pretty vitriolic. Not vitriolic. I get pretty blunt right. with my political views sometimes. And so people are like, oh, he hates. I don't hate anybody. Well, you're you're a white male, so well, you're I clearly say, a racist. I'm a white you, heterosexual yeah. Christian conservative male. I normally wear a cowboy hat. Uh, I drive a diesel truck. I obviously have a dog that's burning up the ozone with flatulence. I own cows. Uh, what else would AOC be pissed yeah. at? I mean, I'm, I'm public enemy you're, number one. She'd be pissed at you're selling your T-shirts uh, under the $70 price that, that she that's sells her. That's exactly hers right. So you, I just, a, you reminded me because, so you're early. <laughs> so I'm going to have I'm gonna have BFD hats with like a leather patch. I'll hook, the next time you come on, we'll have that. But for this one, since you've got, you usually have the cowboy hat. I love me. it. 
Awake, not awake, woke. Not woke. And I want y'all to see that. That's a good looking hat. I don't know if you guys understand, in Joe Biden's America, with the <laughs> supply chain issues going on, it's hard to get patches and it's really hard to get these hats. Yeah. Like as a guy who's been selling apparel for years, it's hard to get your hands on these hats. So kudos on a good looking hat. And even says, be the change. I hope, are you selling these? Yeah, I sell I those. I hope you are. Yeah. I want people oh. to go buy thousands of these. So that'll take us into our first ad break. There uh, you go. <laughs> so awakenotwokestore.com. If you go there, you can check out all of our gear awake for 15% off. And while we're at it, let's also talk about food shortages, which honestly, I kind of thought this was a joke at points. And I, I'm pretty sure it's no longer a joke. Uh, temperatures aren't the only thing rising. Gasoline prices, food prices, tensions through society, global conflict, supply chain breakdowns, you name it. Experts say the looming global food crisis could be worse than any year since World War II, which I think might be even worse and I wasn't even around then. Mm -hmm. What should you do? Go to prepare with BTC, which is be the change, but prepare with btc.com. Get your long-term emergency food storage from My Patriot Supply while you still can. My Patriot Supply is America's largest preparedness company with millions of satisfied customers. Their food lasts up to 25 years in storage. When you need it, it'll be there. Act quickly. Save 150 bucks on a three-month emergency food kit. These kits provide breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, snacks, totaling over 2,000 calories a day. You're not going to go hungry when you have this emergency food. So go to preparewithbtc.com. Save 150 bucks. You got it, and uh, we'll be right back with the show. And we are back. Uh, we've got some guests in the studio. We got Mo. We've got my girlfriend. We of course got Biscuit. Uh, so they're they're <laughs> popping in. So we've got. If you guys ever need to applaud or you feel like the need to, awesome. So. Um, and also Casey uh, from Truth Will Set You Free. He's backstage in Utah right now. It's weird to say he's backstage. You had a funny ass joke yesterday talking about monkeypox <laughs> two days no ago. No telling. God, yeah, you, well, was, you know, I don't know if you. This is breaking news. I don't know when you're going to air this, but uh, they're now changing the name of monkeypox because they say it could be perceived as a racist, racist term. Yes, yes. Which only racists would come up with that idea. One hundred percent. They would think that. No one else was thinking that. No, I was completely thinking that. If you're gay, it might affect you, since that's who gets monkeypox. Um, you know, what you're doing with the banana. Uh, it's so, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but they're changing super, the name of it. Super, yeah. Monkeypox wasn't gaining any traction. No, no. no. Like, because China virus from China. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. I'm, I, we don't need to go any further. <laughs> All right. So let, let's get into some topics, because I do want to ask you a couple things. So when you when you and I first interviewed, I we, you were running for office. You were running for governor. Um you, I didn't realize you, you've got quite the scholastic background. And yeah. I was talking actually to Matt Locke the other day and we were talking about you and, uh, talk about your degrees. Well, I, uh, I went to university of Georgia. I wound up getting a couple of bachelor's degrees. I got a master's degree from Columbia, uh, international university, which is actually a Bible school and seminary. One of the, one of the most elite, um, um, seminaries, uh, private schools in the nation small school on purpose. So I uh, went there and then did some vet school work at the University of Georgia, which I never talk about because I don't want people sending me messages on, on Facebook going, what's wrong with my horse? Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's kind of like being the doctor at the party and people say, take a look at this rash. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's monkey pox. Yeah. Uh, no, so, no, no, so, no, nope, can't say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. So I, I, you know, we talk about that, but I love to, I love for people to underestimate me. You know, they see the cowboy hat and they say, oh, it's just a guy, you know, with his dog in a truck. He doesn't know anything. And, um, and I love playing that role, yeah. right? I'm just the country boy, the redneck. You know, I got the jokes about being from Georgia, being so country that I got a cousin that got arrested for selling chicken salad sandwiches at a cockfight <laughs> because she didn't have a food <laughs> permit, it, it, which, you know, is basically a true story. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, I love for people to think that, and then yeah. you, you kind of disarm them a little bit, and then you hit them with some of that intellectual stuff. But, I mean, like, I taught master's level Greek for a couple of years, you know, on the on the – college level and and it was um you know people don't people just they don't know that yeah and i traveled you know i did a lot in third world countries for the better part of 15 years i delivered a lot of human babies in villages that you know most people can never find again and so you know it's it's a weird story like i've done as much living in in 49 years of my life than most people do three times live in 80 years you know yeah. i've just done it all and I, you know, worked a lot with animals and I realized that I was better at running my mouth than I was putting my arm up a cow's ass. So, and it's still BS either way you look at it, yeah, but, exactly. but it's literally it's a whole lot of easier work. Um, 
so I've done so many things, and, and people just get surprised <clears throat> by it, and and they're like, oh wow, you know. But I I never ever really talk about those things like on my platforms. Yeah. I never do. Yeah. So it's uh it's fun it's fun to do that. To so people. I, well, the one thing I noticed when you were running, because <clears throat> I went to one of your events. That's where we met and mm-hmm. watched you speak for an hour and a half and. A lot of people can, you know, they can talk and they can bullshit for a bit, but you, you were able to rattle off statistics, numbers, and just overall politics from somebody that I, I obviously didn't know your background at the right. time, so I didn't expect it. So you're obviously smarter than not just the average bear, but you've, you've been a part of uh, a, a, an interesting life where you have a yeah. great background. Did that, was that part of your decision in terms of going into politics, or why did well, you decide you know, to go? I went into the politics because I was just I was a little pissed off. I, I was tired of, you know, I always said, like back when I started doing comedy, I said I'm never going to do political comedy. I'm never going to get into that. That lasted about five or six months. <laughs> and then I said, okay, well, I'm never going to run for office. I managed to get about five years before I finally did that. Uh, but I was just, I don't, and I always said another thing. I always said, I'm never going to be a part of a political party. I'm not going to be a Democrat, not going to be a Republican. I'm just going to base off of, but even though I'm a conservative guy, but at the end of the day, I'm a small government guy. I think yeah. people just be left alone. Yeah. Make your own decisions. You know, I lean very libertarian in that regard, but, uh, I ran as a Republican because I wanted to fight this big government trend, which ultimately is Republicans, rhinos, you know, in name only kind of thing. That's that's happening in the state of Texas. So I jumped in because I was tired of the mandates. I was tired of unconstitutional actions that were happening. People were losing their jobs, being deemed non-essential, and 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 being told they couldn't go to work. You know, it thrust us into an economy that was as bad as the, or worse actually than the Great Depression. Yeah. Here in the state of Texas, tens of thousands of, of of jobs were lost, never to be reopened again. Businesses closed down. Millions of people out of work, and and we're still suffering the effects of these bureaucratic decisions that were made. So I was, you know, I jokingly tell the story. I was in South Dakota. I'm sitting across the table from Don Trump Jr. Phone goes off. It says more mask mandates being handed out in this state. And I said, you know, I joke. I said, I don't know if it's because I was with a Trump or drinking wine that night, but I got on Twitter and said I'm running for governor in, in Texas in 2022, and it blew up. And then it was like, ooh, 48 hours later. I was like, yeah, okay, I think I am going to do this <laughs> Can't thing. Can't take that back. Because at this point, they're going to hang me. You know, my followers were so excited. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and so we did it. It was the worst, best experience of my life. That race, I think we ran it so well, because again, I had no political background, no political clout, nobody owed me any favors, no big donors were out there that owed me favors, anything like that. There were no hooks in me from special interests or lobbies or anything like that. And, you know, when they, when they at the end of it, because at the beginning people thought it was a joke, 18 months later they were like, damn, this guy's serious. Like, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. So I think they're probably going to make me run again at some point in time. I don't know if I'm going to or not. We'll yeah. see. But I, I wanted to, I wanted to make a point. I think we, we made a good one in that race. Yeah. No, 100%. I think um, just what the fact that Abbott has had to change his tune, cause I think he's actually done some better things yeah. since the race has been over. Cause he realizes that he's got to, he's got to embrace this base. And we're yeah. going to, we're going to probably go a little bit more into Texas politics in a little bit, but first, well, this is part of Texas politics. Cause this is one area I don't know if we're fully going to agree, but I actually agree more with you now that I listened to you talk about it on your show the other day with gun control. Yeah. So at first, I'm gonna be honest. I watched McConaughey's f- snippets. Yeah. And so, like segments of it. And I liked it. I was yeah. like, I get the point. Um, I think the red flag laws are incredibly dangerous. I think there's other things that I would do instead. So what is, and you, you brought some of them up on your show. What is so bad about the Senate bill that is out there right now in terms of. Yeah. On the uh, show, you know, I was referring to some things that I don't think people realize. Like for instance, if somebody loans you a gun mm-hmm. uh, and you go hunting with it or say you get pulled over and there's a gun in the car that doesn't belong to you, that becomes a felony offense. Did not know that until you. Um, you know, if, if a, let's say someone goes to a therapist and says, I, I have had suicidal thoughts. Well, if that therapist turns you in and you become a red flag situation, Um, then they could take your guns away. Well, you know, we got veterans out there that are admitting to PTSD. They're not going to go to that therapist anymore Anymore. because they're not giving up their guns. And so now 22 suicides a day becomes 50 suicides a day or whatever that, you know, number, it becomes, it becomes a lot. I don't think they've ran that number in a while. I think it's quite a bit higher. It's it's already, already, it's It's already quite a bit higher. You add that to it. You've now done everything that the community was trying to create awareness for, and yeah. I think that's incredibly dangerous. I'm, I'm not a fan of red flag laws. I was already shocked that Florida's was kind of in place the way that they were. 
the 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 thing that I am probably different from you because you talked about it because again shall not be infringed. Yeah. In the state of Texas, you have to be 21 to have a handgun. Right. To me, I'm okay with ARs being 21 if you're going to make handguns 21. And you could have the whole discussion. Why not uh, make voting 21? Why I'm cool. Whatever. Do you think there might be a purpose of increasing that age to 21? Well, I, I think that the issue is not an age issue. I mean, a lot of these mass shootings that we've seen historically have been people over the age of 21, the people who committed it. Uh, and again, I think we need to get to a better issue of making sure that we know the mental state of the people who do have these guns, how you do that gets real tricky because mm -hmm. again, you get into what we were just discussing with the, you know, the PTSD and stuff. Right. Um, you know, how far do you go with that? If I've taken a Lexapro at some point in time in my life because of a depression issue, right. I mean, at what point in time? Because again, this is a, this is incremental legislation, right? They say it's one thing. You get you put a foot in the door and then they go further because right. let's say you know, big government never stops at that. Right. It, like if you could say, OK, we're going to raise the age of owning a gun at 21 and then that's that's going to end all of this stuff. But it's not. It's not. It's you know, not. you could take all the guns away. You could take yeah. all the guns away and there's still going to be violence. People yeah. are going to commit violence against other people. Um, you know, unless you're willing to ban all people, then the evil is going to persist. Right. So so. You know, my thing is we're not dealing with what I perceive to be the root issue because you can change numbers, you can change laws. We right now already have the most strict gun laws in America that we've ever had in the history of this country. You go back, everybody's always had guns. From the founding of our, of our, of our country, people have always had guns. Mm -hmm. You go back, uh, but, you, but you, we're not seeing this type of violence until the last 50, 60 years. What changed? The issue is we've seen a trend towards fatherlessness. We've seen a breakdown of the nuclear family. We've seen a breakdown of values. We've taken ideals such as faith in God out of most of society, including the churches. Right. Um, and so people don't have anything to anchor to anymore. You know, I, I was, I'm was i Generation X. I grew up a latchkey kid. You know, fortunately, I had yeah. good parents who fill that void. But, you know, I, I the television raised me. Yeah. Well, these days, kids are getting bombarded with all this stuff. Now, you couple, you know, they're living in front of a screen. They're, you 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 couple that with um, lockdowns and mandates and isolation and masking and right. doing class on a Zoom call or a plexiglass thing, that's where it gets problematic. These kids, they don't, they don't know how to process any of this stuff. And then add to that the fact that we've lacking, we're lacking the value on human life anymore. So we've had the argument on Truth Will Set You Free. You know where I'm going on this one. Do you think video games in today's world have played a role? I don't think it helps. I don't think it helps. It's like saying, do I think, you know, listening to rock music leads people to Satan worship? Right. I, I, no, I don't think it does. Um, I, you know, I don't, I think, again, it, it doesn't help in that you're putting something in your mind that's probably not the most wholesome thing. Right. Um, but I think most people in the world can process that fictional fantasy most. from reality. Most. There's some who can't. The ones that are already sick enough to yeah. possibly. See, I think, I think, like you said, it's a myriad of issues. I, do th I, don't, I, I don't think we can ban video games. That's, it's, right. We're America. That's not going to happen. Right. I do think there might need to be some more ownership in the parents. Yeah. And if a, if a child, if somebody under 18 commits this crime, and these, these games are NC-17, or yeah. you got to be a certain age, and parents are still buying it for their kids. Or first person well, see, and that games. goes back to the gun argument. If it's 21 years old, can they still, if, can a 17-year-old still get their hands on their gun? Well, can they get their hands on a video game? It's the same kind of deal. Yeah, so. it's, it's, a, it's super tricky. The last thing I've It is, control, it is tricky. McConaughey I liked until I watched the clip of him doing the... Like the, 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 then I'm like, now you're now you're acting. You've got the the shoes that are bullshit that are that you're they're showing, and I yeah. get the point. But it was such a stage prop, and it's on a guy that has made a living holding guns in movies, <laughs> right. and it's like I just I couldn't. And you know, I, on a personal level, I like Matthew. I, I think Matthew's a good guy. I think he's got a good heart. I think he's got a good value system. Uh, I think he loves his family, loves his wife, loves his kids. Yeah. You know, I and he's a common sense guy. I mean, yeah, he's, he's Hollywood. I get that. But look, I spent a lot of time in Hollywood. I, I know a lot of these people. They don't live on the same planet we do. No. I mean, my God, I'm with Glenn Beck every day. He doesn't live on the same planet we do. Uh, it's, it's a different reality. It's a different realm. It's like when Arnold Schwarzenegger says, Oof, oof, your freedom. Yeah. You know, all this going to hell with your freedom. Yeah, you don't ever have to leave your compound. Right. Y you're, you know what I'm saying? Do we have think, to go out <laughs> in right. the public. Do you think, because obviously it's a, it's a, Good move for you in Hollywood right now if you just come out and be like, well, Joe Biden's a good guy or like, or yeah. the Trump sucked. 
Do you think that any of the Hollywood actors that don't say anything, do you just automatically assume they might actually be conservative? There's tons of them. Yeah. And, and by and large, they operate in silence. Now, the ones who have spoken out, and very benignly, I mean, very vanilla convictions uh, in Allen. the things they've said. Chris Pratt. I mean, Chris Pratt, they yeah. hate Chris Pratt. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, you know, just because he's kind of got a, a traditional value system of, and look, I've been around Chris Pratt. He's like, I would love to go duck hunting with you guys. Yeah. But I can't because if anybody knew that I wanted duck hunting with you guys, uh, we need to actually set up a duck hunt with Chris Pratt. That would yeah, be fantastic, right? You, no, you are so, not. So, you know, to we're go. sitting. I'm in love with him. I mean, I'm sitting around. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you, I'm in love with him too. And, you know, I'm sitting around a bonfire. I'm sitting around, you know, we're, we're with the Duck Dynasty guys who are good friends, and we're sitting around the fire, and, you know, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't even tell this on Chris, but, you know, he was sitting around there, and he's like, I would love to go duck hunting. I want to go duck hunting. I can't. We're like, yeah. I mean, how much money do you really need, Chris? Yeah, it really. I mean, come on. Get your life back. He's got a lot of bills, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you were talking inflation also. Obviously, a big thing to talk about as the Fed today, and you're probably watching this a couple days later, the Fed just raised 0. 0.75, <laughs> another, you know, whatever. So oh, inf- Joe Biden's making history. <sighs> inflation. Inflation <laughs> is listed. And I don't understand how it's listed at eight point six percent, but you rattle. There's not a single number right. under eight point six percent. How bad do you really think it is? Uh, it's bad. Like that eight point six percent. I think we're going to see it at ten pretty quick. Uh, I was saying early on. I was saying back in March. I was saying it was going to be by the end of the year. I think it's going to be faster than that because there's no there's no stimming this this flow right now. Uh, I think I think the only number under that is maybe health care availability or, or health care has risen 4% uh, in its costs. But other than that, everything is high. I mean, like gasoline is like 48.7%. It's, it's insane. Year um, over year, not, not even year and right, a half. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. And uh, so we're in, a, we're in a bad situation when you factor in the World Economic Forum with the ESG scores that they're trying to implement, a lot of big corporations already doing that, where, you know, you take away FICA scores, you take away that you're, you're, and you replace it with a social credit score, obviously, on, on how does your company treat the environment and social justice and your governance, you know, do you have enough trans people, do you have enough people of color, you know, on your executive boards? These kind of things. And so, and if you don't do that, then you can't do business. Well, they're trying to implement that on a personal level. Again, Klaus Schwab, who's the head of the World Economic Forum, famously said, uh, you will own nothing and be happy. Mm -hmm. That is their agenda. Uh, All of these big government guys have been been to Davos. They've been to the World Economic Forum summits, Mm -hmm. uh, which is scary. These are the people in charge. So, you know, these guys, modern monetary theory, they love deficits. They love debt. They love printing money that has no backing of anything financial substance. And there, so, you know, when they talked about a uh, Green New Deal that was going to cost an infrastructure rebuild of $90 trillion, and we said, that money doesn't exist. doesn't have to exist. Right. doesn't have to exist because they don't really need anything of value to do anything with it. Um, those are very dangerous things. Right. That's why, you know, when I read the Green New Deal, and I didn't read all of it, but I read enough of it to know that it was like a, something that a sixth grader did with a crayon. And then you see that AOC is pushing it, and you're like, ah, well, that explains a lot of things. This will, you know, we're talking about farting cows and trains to Hawaii. And no, bartending. they yeah. meant it. And they, they really did mean <clears throat> it. Hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. So, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you can't afford gas, uh, you know, there was a, what was it, the, the, the congresswoman the other day who said, I drove my electric car here from Michigan and I passed gas stations and it didn't matter how how the gas prices were. I just drove right past them. You talk about being tone deaf. Yeah. And absolutely moronic. Yeah. You know, and you're from Michigan from crying out loud. That's 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 Motor City. Yeah. You know, um, it's, so it's very tone deaf. But that's that's kind of where these government officials are. I I. I've done a little bit of research based on because they say it's the highest inflation in 40 years. Mm-hmm. If you look at the way they figured the inflation 40 years ago, it's closer to 30% based on the way that they did it then, mm-hmm. which I think is mm-hmm. pretty – because you, you add in housing and you add in uh, – I think you add in fuel. I don't even think fuel is incorporated into their version of the number. I think it is mm-hmm. much worse than, than people say. And I just fear – because, you know, the, you look at uh, stock markets and typically when they say the stock market, uh, uh, if you invest, even at the lowest point – in the United States stock market, 20 years later, it'll still be worth quite a bit more yeah. or a certain percentage. I don't know. The way that Trump set up our economy, for good or for bad, I think that Biden's version, I said this going into the election, I think it was going to be throwing that economy in an ice bath. And I don't know 
if our recovery could will actually be in that same place in 20 years. I think we could end up looking a lot like China, a lot like Japan, a lot like Europe, where the stock market, we, we think the stock market goes up all over the world. United States stock market is the only place that is a continuous build. The rest, you look at those, they have stayed the same yeah. for decades. Yeah, so they, I, they, they're kind of equivalent to what our NASDAQ looks like in that <laughs> regard. You know, it yeah. hits that 10,000 mark kind of stayed. And we just saw some gains there, but yeah, it, it's, it's scary. Yeah, really, really scary. I mean, we're obviously, and again, Obama's um, former Treasury guy. He he said the other day. He said, "Yeah, this is not optimistic. We are headed to a recession, and we're in it." Like I can't. Yeah, believe he I said, think we're in it. I don't. I don't get how. I think yeah. again. I think it's tone deaf for people to be like, "We might." And I think J.P. Morgan said twenty seven percent chance in the next calendar year. I'm like, yeah, a year. You think that we think we're going to make it? A I year mean, right I'm now? looking at my portfolio, and I'm not happy. You know, I'm not fifty percent half because I have a lot of Nasdaq stuff. Well, I have a lot of stuff that's out there that uh, that is in ways protected just because of the type of thing they are. But uh, and I've got a lot of perspective stuff that's out there, and we're just. But I'm watching it, and I'm going, man, this is it's it's really affecting everything yeah. in this regard. So you know, and again, if you want to build back better, first thing you got to do is you got to tear it all down so you can build it back. Right. Um, and we were doing pretty daggum good, and whether you're a Trump person or not. Uh, and again, look, I, I criticize Trump as much as I, I praise him. I don't think the guy walks on water. And no. I think especially these days, I think he's kind of, kind of gotten pretty swampy. Mm-hmm. I'll put it this way. 2016 Trump is never coming back. Right. He's never going to be that guy. No. Again. Uh, I wish he was. Um, and hopefully Ron DeSantis will step into that and, and kind of fill that void. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's, it's a bad situation. Yeah. All right. So with that, we're going to go to our next uh, ad break because it fits. Talking a little bit about the economy. COVID-19, as we know, has been a challenge for all of us. As the world shut down, the economy came to a halt, leaving future many businesses in a crappy position. Uh, as we begin to find normalcy again, there is something that you can actually do if you owned one of those small businesses. A lot of people had the PPP, had the EIDL. Um, this was incredibly restrictive at first, what I'm about to talk about, which is the ERC, the employee uh, a retention credit. You guys can fill them out. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put the link. Make sure we'll put it in the comments. But it's easily found. I have it shortened for you. Bit.ly backslash erc btc. Again, that's bit.ly backslash erc btc. Great for anybody that's in the manufacturing, restaurant, construction, and retail. Uh, again, it's a stimulus program that has no cap. And it's designed to bolster those businesses. It's free to just apply and see if you fit. So essentially, it's up to twenty six thousand dollars per employee from the year before. So if you have employees in your business and you were affected either by revenue reduction, supply chain disruptions, or had a partial or complete shutdown in 2020 or 2021 first three quarters. So we'll be right back. Let's talk abortion. Abortion coming in real hot. Right on. So we're right around where the the Supreme Court opinion or decision is going to come out with Roe versus Wade. Mm-hmm. Um, I think both of us agree that it is it's bad. Le- it, it was a bad uh, bad law essentially right. to make that. Talking Texas, do you think that Roe versus Wade being overturned, sending it back to the states, could be dangerous for purplish states like Texas has yeah. become? Yeah. In fact, I said a couple of months ago, if Roe v. Wade's overturned, we're not going to see that red wave that people anticipate in November. So, um, you know, I look, I'm a pro-life guy. I'm a pro-life guy. I believe life begins at conception. I believe in the value of life. I believe that uh, you're imprinted with that DNA code at, at conception, at fertilization that's with you for the rest of your life. Um, uh, you know, I understand that there are circumstances that happen that ultimately, and I've said over and over again, while I, I believe that all life is precious and should be protected. There's, there's, you know, women have to make that decision on their own. I, you know, I, I'm not living with that. I can make all the arguments right. in the world as to why, you know, I had a conversation with a good friend who just last week d- discovered that she's pregnant and doesn't, didn't mean to be, doesn't want to be, you know, right. she's considering all these things. And you try to, you try to approach these people with love and, and just say, look, this is a tough situation. But but when you get into the legislation side of it, it gets crazy because I, you know, how do you legislate that, right? How do, how do you, it's going to be hard to, it, you know, it's going to get to a point where you can't legislate morality. You can make it harder and harder for people to do certain right. things, of course. Um, but I go back to what we were talking about with the value of human life, you know, no matter what legislation comes down on this, 
or how they rule in the Supreme Court, we're going to get to a point where it, it, it's still people just don't value life right. anymore. They don't value life. If you found that quote unquote clump of cells on Mars, they would spend trillions of dollars trying to protect it. Right. But because we have so much life here on on Earth, it's we take it for granted. Yeah. And so that's my thing. I. Look, I, I, I do. I think, it's a, I think it's an atrocious practice, especially 98% of abortions in America are done for the sake of convenience. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, you, you take away the rape, the incest, those kind of things. You take that away, you're still, you're 98% of those abortions that are being done are being done because you just don't want the baby. Right. It's an inconvenience. So I would love nothing more than to see a change in that, but... More importantly, I want to see a people's change of heart. And right. I just don't think that's going to happen from the Supreme Court. No. In fact, I'm at a point, Anthony, where I don't think this country's ever coming back together, period. Whether it's abortion issue or whatever. I, like, <clears throat> I, I haven't really wrestled with this. It's been heavy on me in the last couple of weeks. I yeah. just don't see any way that the left and right are ever going to reconcile in this country. Yeah. Ever. And I think Bryson, Bryson Gray talked about the fact that it, because he, you know, he, he quotes the Bible a lot, and he was talking about... The Bible talks about a division. I'm like, no, it doesn't. And then I looked. You can you can interpret it that way. And ultimately, right. maybe we are at that point. And I I took a break from the other show because you take the Roe versus Wade stuff and just kind of the hate back and forth and the misinformation. But a lot of it was hate. And then you take the gun situations that have happened, which, as sad as the the mass shootings are, they're a a nail, yeah. you know, of the actual real issues going on with gun crimes in this country, which have nothing to do. No, no laws are going to you know prevent. Right. So it's like I just I had to take a step back because I do think we're at a point where division is we are we are as divided as we've ever been and I don't know if it's coming back from that it's going to have to be how can we live with it at this point you know I do a, I used to do a thing I used to bit do a bit on um, social media and how we're divided when I was on stage and one of the illustrations I talked about you know a bird a healthy bird has two wings left wing right wing right mm -hmm. you one a one winged bird ain't going nowhere it's right. going to go in circles so but you need got to have balance and it, but you don't want to ride on the wings like if you're on an airplane you don't want to fly out on the wing you want to get in the middle yeah. right so I always say to people get back towards the middle of the bird where the heart the vision the brain the mind is you know uh, that's where the life is right. flying out on the wings is a little dangerous but we're all living on the wings these days you know uh, I, you know, I, I am a I am a fiscal conservative. Believe in small government. I've let people manage and govern themselves in their homes. I'm I'm reasonably socially liberal in a lot of ways. Uh, I just want to be left alone. I want you to be left alone. I want you to make your decisions. Yeah. And, and if you, I want you to be as free as you can possibly be until your freedom it starts uh, encroaching on somebody else's freedom. Right. Then, then we got a problem. Which is which is kind of the the thing with the the pro choice and pro life stuff and. Um, like you, I think there is a morality point to it, but yeah. the, some of the conversation and why I think it is dangerous to this red wave. And I think if the economy gets bad enough by November, I think that it, it'll negate it. But yeah. there is because I am not a like staunch pro life or I'll have a conversation with anybody that's pro choice. I get it unless sure. unless you're talking about eight months and seven months and six. I'm like, this has got to stop. Like there's a, there's you know a certain level where you got to stop it. Right. But I do think there is a lot of quiet Republican voters that are pro-choice yeah. that are good. <laughs> sees another dog. He saw that dog. I saw that coming. <laughs> Biscuit sees that dog out the window. She's going to protect <laughs> us from it. Biscuit's yeah. ready to go. But I, I think I, I think we see that there is going to be that issue with voting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that just because it is a, uh, it's a topic that is, people quietly are, it's, a, it's number one. It's not anywhere near my number one list of things. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have said, I made a mistake. I voted for Joe Biden. I'm sw I'm going back towards the middle or going towards the right where I think that that might stop them. And I think it's going to be interesting to see. I think that was Beto's only chance, except for the fact that he's a complete moron. And he I is a moron. Gonna, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get any worse than, yeah, than Beto. Yeah, he, he's a political hack. Uh, but but then again, Greg Abbott's a big big government shill as well, who also is awful cozy with the World Economic Forum. True. Um, but again, at least we can, as you alluded to earlier, we can push Greg Abbott to say the right things, whether he does them or not, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, he still pisses me off to the nth degree, uh, with various things that he does or doesn't do, I should say. But, but, you know, I am one of those guys who says, okay, you know, like this January 6th commission going on, that the whole thing, that whole sham is just <laughs> to make sure Trump never runs again. Right, they just want it's, him out. It's exactly what I said. Yeah. It's it's marketing campaign for the next election because there's right. no point. 
There's yeah. no point except to, again, watch people on social media be like, see see what I said? You're an idiot. I'm like, because yeah. I'm watching a three-minute video clip yeah. together or because they debunked a movie that they didn't actually debunk, they just laughed at it. Right. That's not debunking anything. Right. And I sat down today with a guy, uh, uh, Taylor Hansen, not from Mbop Hansen, yeah. but Taylor Hansen, who <laughs> who was on, you know, he was there. He rendered aid to Ashley Babbitt when she got shot. He videoed the whole thing. Yeah. And, they want, he was there. He walked all through the Capitol. He was there. All the stuff <laughs> went in. He's begging them to subpoena him to testify. They, they won't. won't do it. No. They've searched every, every guy, every homeless dude that was peeing on a tree six blocks away from the right. Capitol that day who happened to have a cell oh, that's phone. Funny. They've pinged that son of a bitch, that's and they're bringing funny. him in and talking to him because he probably had something to do with it. Yeah. Right? And it's, <laughs> the, Taylor can't even get subpoenaed, and he was in the damn Capitol. When we're done with this, remind me something. All right. Oh, you got that? Okay. But, but, uh, I, but that's but so, <laughs> so we're looking at this thing. So the point, the overarching point that I'm trying to make is, I, I, you know, okay, you want to bring this country back together, even give it a shot. Um, you know, even as a conservative, we may have to come to a point, and I'm not giving my opinion here on this. I'm just saying we may have to concede and say, look, Trump ain't what's best right. in 2024. Maybe a Ron DeSantis type person who has emerged as a rock star. Right. And I know Ron, he's not perfect. No. But nobody is. But damn, here's a guy with convictions, and he stands by him, and he knows how to back him up. Yeah. And he does what's best for the folks he leads. Well, I think uh, I think we got to do now. Yes, make, we do. To, to make sure we do it in the uh, in the first 58 minutes of the show. So this <laughs> is uh, this is and, and no need for a bumper on this one. So this is the. Um, Bondbreaker Slow River Blend Whiskey. So we, I was at an event, and you, I think, emceed it a couple of years ago, the uh, TK Softball yeah, yeah, Classic. Yeah. So I was at the uh, the event. This whiskey was so good, and I, you know, for for bottles of whiskey that are forty bucks or less, you're not going to find too many this good. So I'm going to pour some of this out, and this is going to be called a new segment. By new, it's a new show, so I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's all new. Uh, we're calling it the shot seat, kind of like the hot seat. I'm I like give, it. I'm so we do it we do tequila on my show. I call it your booster shot. Oh, right. Like so you got to get your booster shot. That's smart. And we'll. <laughs> I love it. Can I read? Can I? Is that some of that for me? Better yeah, be. I'm, I'm bringing it over. There you to go. I'll reach. Love it. There you go. All right. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I gave you a bigger. So the first, take a, take a little sip. Try it. Get it's, the nose on it. Yeah. Get it on your tongue. Chew it a little bit. It's pretty damn good. It is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let me look at it. Is it a rye? Uh, it's a it's a Hypha blend. Hypha Wise and whiskey. It's heavy, yeah. So it's a slow river blend, a blend of two wheat whiskeys aged between five and three years with macerated lemon peel. Uh, so okay. it creates kind of that. A, I got the lemon in it. You did, I did too. So it's got a what is it? Smooth and balanced, subtle notes of vanilla and caramel with hints of citrus and spice. I got the citrus for sure. I it's it was I was shocked. So I just reached out. Randy, it's Randy Rogers is uh, he was the founder of this yeah. one. So it's awesome. delicious. So everybody's got booze now. It's true, and you actually you have a you have a whiskey as well. We right? do. We've got Buffalo Chip whiskey. Gotcha. Uh, Buffalo Chip whiskey, and uh, it's doing well. It's distributed all over the country now, so it's good. So the way shot seat works, I'm going to ask some quick questions, um, and you you can answer them. Uh, however, honestly, and the, the the thing is, before you answer it, I was going to make it like this fun thing, like if you don't want to answer it, you take a shot, but that's kind of bullshit. That's an easy <laughs> way out. So if it's a, if it's a difficult question. Take take a sip and then, yeah. and then answer it. So yeah. we're on the shot seat from Bondbreaker. Let's so, do it. Uh, question number one. Do you regret running for governor? No. Okay. No. Easy question. No, I don't regret it. Okay. Would I do it again? <laughs> but I don't regret it. <laughs> like I said, worst, best experience. Yeah. Um, so you're at the Blaze. Mm -hmm. um, do you think Steven Crowder is funnier than you? Uh, let me drink on that. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen and I, uh, here's the bombshell. Stephen, I don't know that Stephen and I get along. Um, oh. I respect Stephen. We don't really know each other. I know his dad. You know, his dad, Darren, he's a friend. And um, uh, Stephen's done some squirrely things that I thought were a little like, what the are you doing? You know, and then it, we, we've kind of traded some barbs over time. I did not know that. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, Steve, Steve is a sharp guy. He's yeah. a smart guy. Funnier? No. <laughs> <laughs> All due respect. I've, I've had people get pissed at me. <laughs> They'll come to me like at a show, and they're like, dude, I was I was so pissed off at you, man, because of the things you said about Steven. I was like, I didn't say anything bad about Steven. I just told him we don't really get along. It's he's, truth. His talent is in his voices. Like, yeah. his ability to do, you know, yeah. voice, it's, he's good. And, well, also, and, and also Landau's he has a, brilliant. And that's Landau's a good dude, man. Yeah. And he's smart and funny guy. And I, I don't want anybody to think I'm coming off negative on those guys. They can take it. And, and I tell them, I was like, dude, we bust, we bust each other's balls all the time. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, 
where Steven's talent is, he's got a hell of a production crew and, and a great budget yeah. to get some good things, good content out there, which is phenomenal. So, yeah, yeah his I team love is Steven. huge. Yeah. Um, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, next one. Um, who would you vote for? And I think you've kind of already answered it, but who would you vote for president in 2024? I would hope Ron DeSantis. That would How be- do you feel about Rand Paul? I love Rand Paul. Uh, I think Rand Paul uh, is probably my favorite person in Washington, D.C. Yeah. I can't imagine anybody else taking that title. Uh, Rand is just a solid dude. Great libertarian voice. Um, I high res- highly respect his dad and where he came from. So, yeah, I, I would love to see that happen. It's going to be interesting to see the field that kind of comes out. Because DeSantis said he wasn't going to run, but the fact that he's doing a press tour in New York, and he's got, well, I, I feel like he's... you have to look at the logistics of it. So they do have term limits in Florida, and so he can only do this so second much. term. He can right. only do one more term, and that's that. You know, I think Greg Abbott's going to run for president. I don't think he's got a shot in hell, and he knows that, but he's got all the money in the world, so why not take a stab at it and maybe wind up with an administration secretary position? I think he has aspirations of, of that. So I think it's going to be interesting to see who does pop up. Gotcha. Last, qu- last question on the shot seat. Would you, would you be on social media if this wasn't your career? No. No, I would not. Why not? I hate social media. You know, when I got on social media in 2007, I think it's the enemy of the people. I really do. Uh, when I got on in 2007, for me, it was one big sociological experiment. What made people laugh? What made them angry? What pushed their buttons? What got them to spend their money and act? Uh, now it's gotten to a point where it's just it, it's just pooling our ignorance. You know, mm-hmm. it really is. Um, you know, it, it's it's given it's given way too much power to big tech and Silicon Valley and Big Brother. You know, I sued Facebook back in February and won. I'm the first person in Texas history to sue them and win. The media will not touch that. Right, um, they just won't touch it. Um, but uh, so yeah, I I, I, I think it's. Uh, I think it gives an opportunity for people to be at each other's throat. It further divides us. It makes the world smaller than it should be. You know, in my book, uh, a little cheap plug here, I put a book out in 2020 called Am I Crazy? And I talk about the, the illusion of social media. It gives people a false sense of authority, and it gives people a false sense of celebrity. Everybody's got a platform, and they think they know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. Everybody's an expert online. So um, that's dangerous. Can't we just go back to that? We used to get really aggravated at people's baby pictures, and now we yeah. love that. Yeah. We love that. It'd be yeah. a game changer. Ladies and gents, that was Shot Seat. I wanted to drink more. I'm drinking more. You go ahead and drink. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. You can throw the bumper on that one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Going. I just I had a smoke. Yeah. Do you want some? Yeah. Okay. Hello? Here, everybody. Take, take all God, all God's children. Thank you. He ran the bumper again. <laughs> yeah. You start playing, getting enough whiskey, you just keep playing bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't drink and drive. Okay. Um, unless you're Pelosi's husband. Um, <laughs> you can get away with it if you're, if you're I, Paul Pelosi. No, no, no. You can't say that because yeah. he hasn't been charged yet. So I got, I, on the new Blunt Force discussion page, I already got dinged for the first time. Are you serious? Because I shared Lauren Brobert's thing oh. and they said no because he actually did. Thank you very much. Got wow. A he hasn't been charged yet. They let him go. That's not the way the justice system works for everybody unless you're no, I mean you get pulled over if you if you get pulled over in Texas, and I I have mm-hmm. I have I take you back to a, a one Sunday night on two thousand six, uh, the uh, they treat you like a damn felon. I mean they you are lower than scum. Mm-hmm. You get pulled over under suspicion of, of drinking and driving, and you're a nobody. Right. Uh, they love to hammer people because that's a money maker for the state. I got a big issue when it comes to that. But uh, now that I'm an advocate for drinking and driving, but I remind people that <laughs> drinking and driving is actually not illegal or bars wouldn't have parking lots. It's driving over the limit. Right. That's the issue. And, uh, you know, but you'll see. Paul Pelosi, he's not, he's going. Well, he's also got plenty of money because he can of blow insider his nose trading. And, you yeah. know, what's he going to do? He blow his nose and his $15,000 fine's going to fall out. So Truth. Um it. Let's see. What do we got in that 58 minutes? We're almost, we got about eight minutes left, maybe a little. So let's, um, I want to make sure we're covering a little bit vaccine before we do the last couple minutes. All right. After it. You want to um, get banned right off the bat. I yeah, love it. Yeah, might as well, you know, but it's, it's actually, I'm leading in non-vaccine, but I think we'll get there. So yeah. can we, can we 
because you talked about it on the show, I got in trouble for it because apparently the protected classes, you've got Pride Month, so protected classes is anybody. Tuck your wiener month. That's yeah, what tuck I'm your wiener it. month. Yeah. And then also uh, uh, people that are of a larger frame. Right. Yes. Yeah. We so, can't say fat. Right. I'm fat. Say, I can no. say fat. You can't say fat. Yeah. No. I, I got a BMI of 30. I, trust me. I'm, you're more, cri- <laughs> you see, you're more Chris Pratt before he I'm got pre, dra- I'm pre uh, leading man. It's still, still I'm sexy. I'm Parks and Recreation. So, <laughs> Parks and Pat. Recreation. Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Yeah. I am Parks and Recreation. It. So we're going to go ahead and bring up the Sports Illustrated uh, thing. Thank you, Casey. I, we had to use you for something, Casey. So thank Atta you for boy. being there. So Casey's got this, this, the image uh, that we have here. And this is, I think her name is Yumi New. Yumi New. I simply posted, and again, I had the same opinion as you. It's not that she's not a pretty woman. Kelly will disagree. She's, I mean, but she's a bigger girl. The bathing suit doesn't fit her. And apparently in today's day and age, you can't say somebody is unhealthy. Right. Is that, is that wh- Why? Well, I mean, can you say black people get sickle cell anemia? You know, no, I got, no. I got, you know, I did on Twitter, and I've got a guy who's a doctor, who's a black guy, who's an advocate. He's a blue check. He's still having. This is three weeks later. He's still having right. a damn argument with somebody. I'm getting notified every day. He's going back and forth through these people losing freaking mind on it. But it's a fact. Black people get sickle cell anemia. Right. You, you, I mean, it's a biological fact. It is a it is a physiological fact. Right. It is a, it, you know. So when you're obese. You're not healthy. I mean, no. it's just the way it is. My doctor, I spent 90 minutes. I got a great doctor. I got kind of one of the, I got it like celebrities. I kind of got that concierge deal. You know, I was getting on the phone with him and tell it's him. It's called Teladoc. Up. We all have that. And it's, okay. <laughs> hey, listen, do not shoot down my star, okay? <laughs> he sent me to the, he sent me to the uh, thing to get blood panels. He goes, this was after the campaign because I literally turned into a lump of shit. I mean, I just was like lazy. I was tired. I was just gross. I didn't want to do anything. Didn't want to work out. Of and uh, it just sat on me. I gained like twenty pounds there at the end of the campaign with stress and uh, just stress eating and gas station food. Um, but he sent me blood panels. I gave like eleven vials. You know, I was like lightheaded. I gave yeah. so much blood. He looked at everything. So get on the phone with him. He's like, look. You you you're deficient in everything. Yeah. No D, no B, no testosterone. We're going to give you those shots. He said, "I'd tell you to turn your head and cough, but at this point, you got a vagina." So he's like, "There's nothing." So this there. is your month. Oh, exactly. This is your month. Exactly. I'm like, talk about timing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, I you're like, um, I got nothing. I got nothing here, and so that's a you know, I, and I gained the weight. And he's like, "Got to get the weight off of you because that's not where you you normally you know I'm carrying about 25 pounds that I normally don't carry." Yeah. And he goes, we got we to deal with this. Why? Why? Because it's not healthy. healthy. You get your cancers, your diabetes, your heart disease, all of these things are going to come through your belly fat, through the, you know, the blood's going to travel through the right. central part of your core of your body. That's where it's going to pick up the garbage, right? Um, and so you look at Yumi Nu on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Now, I've always argued when it comes to women, and I do love women, um, I, I mean, if I could take a pill and be gay and have all my options open, I might try it. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just saying that I've always... Who are you talking to on that pilly talk stuff I, that you do? <laughs> pilly talk. I love to do that simply because it pisses certain people yeah. off, mm-hmm. right? Just I'm like that gunkle. I'm your gunkle. I'm yeah. your gay uncle. <laughs> so, <laughs> do that pilly talk. And so that just pisses certain people off, and then other people love it. I just think it's silly. But uh, I... Uh, I uh, I have always said that if men could reconcile what they think looks good with what we know feels good, we would all choose bigger women, mm-hmm. right? Because we're like, yeah, it's comfortable. So not, anyway, not, you, you out on that? Nope, you're not going to touch, nope, you're not gonna touch nope, that one? Yeah, See, that's what happens when you bring your girlfriend yeah, to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nope. I mean, you can get thicker, you know what I'm saying? No, but seriously, I say that, I, I, I think regardless if you're carrying weight, whatever, and you're going to look at it not from a health standpoint, but from a from an aesthetic beauty standpoint, I don't agree with what Jordan Peterson did. Yeah, you know, not beautiful. I, well, that's a, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. But the issue is, I said, if I and I made a I made a sports I took a Sports Illustrated of a and I put a fat horse running the Kentucky Derby. I photoshopped it on there. I was like, who's betting on this horse? Right. Nobody's going to bet on that horse. Exactly. You know, I was like, if you saw the same girl on the cover of Cycling USA, yeah. you wouldn't care what bike she's riding. You just want to know, is it holding her up? Right. Uh, you know, 
it just it doesn't it, it doesn't, doesn't it doesn't fit, fit the you, brand. You you have Sports Illustrated, which is, they put out the body issue, which glorifies the athletic form. Which I've had, an, and and somebody called me out. They're like, you wouldn't say that about a man. I'm like, well, I didn't have a platform years ago, but I made fun of Prince Fielder being on the front of the body issue right. when he was out because he's a big, fat, heavy dude. dude. And and Prince and, Prince Fielder, as a professional baseball player playing first base for Detroit, had a 52 inch waist. Yeah, 52 he's inch a waist. That's huge. a big dude. Yeah. Um, he's a big boy. And, he is and, not the picture of athletic prowess. And the big issue, and right now in this world of COVID, which I think we feel very similar on, they're saying that this is da- this is one of the, this is the number one comorbidity. It is. So how is it that we can't? And again, if you are an overweight model, and maybe we'll get into this more after the fifty-eight minutes, but after we beam is done, but. If 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 you're selling brasiers or whatever to right. overweight people, that's fine. Right. This is not a Sears catalog. This is not a Kohl's catalog. This is what is supposed to be the pinnacle of body shape. And yeah. when we're in this issue, and, and I know that you've even talked about Toby Keith on the last episode with his cancer, that doesn't have anything to do with COVID, or does it have to do? And I and I know that Live Nation, I know that some of these places right. have required it of some of the biggest stars that I'm sure are <coughs> on our path, but they've had to get it anyways. Yeah. So I just think that we're take away the myocarditis, take away all that the rise in cancer right now yeah. is absolutely absurd. So I saw that you said you were a, a pure blood. So I one am. Of, one of I am. Sh- I am. I, as a single man, I am unvaccinated and ready to get acclimated. You know what I'm saying? So ch- <laughs> check yeah, out yeah. that shirt. So we've got this is our probably our most popular, the unvaccinated the lives camera. matter shirt. So I that's yours. I I feel like when we met, you were probably a large, but you know, I got you an XL. That's messed just, up, dude. I got you an XL just in Talk case. About fat shaming. <laughs> I'll put it on. It'll be a schmedium. Uh, no, I, uh, thank you for that. I'm, I'm collecting stuff. I know. The, uh, and I got a dog that's barking and everything. Oh, perfect. No, I, 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 how are we doing on time? Where are for, we at? We got two minutes left on that 58. Yeah. All right, yeah. cool. Yeah. So I, I just, I was just going to make the point. I, you know, I, uh, it, it's, it is a double standard. There's no question about that. But at the end of the day, I'm, I have a talk about apparel. I have an apparel brand. We call it unapologetic, right? Uh, and we're unapologetic outdoors, unapologetic. I don't care if you kill things, catch things. We're unapologetic patriots. We're going to put guns out there. We're going to talk about all this stuff. I'm not going to apologize. And so you, we've got to – that's the key to culture. We've got to continue, even in the face of the woke mob and the cancel mob, we've got to continue to say the things that are true. Yeah. You don't – it's not about my truth. There's no such thing. You might have a story. Yeah. That's not truth. That's your perspective or your narrative of your life. But we've got to continue to speak abject uh, and objective truth in, into this stuff, or we're screwed as a society. Absolutely. I've got a little bit more on this, and then we've got about one or two more questions. But I know we're wrapping up for, for WeBeam. So um, first off, thank you guys for joining the first episode on WeBeam. Chad, if if they want to, and for those as this episode is, is, is ending, if you want to continue to watch the rest of this, it'll be another 15 or so minutes. Uh, just make sure you check it out on WeBeam TV or OpsLens or find it on one of the social media networks, Rumble, YouTube, et cetera. It will be up on that. Chad, how can people find you? The most vain web address ever. Mm-hmm. Watchchad.com. Watch. Watchchad.com. You don't know what you're going to watch me do, but... We're there. Sounds like an OnlyFans. It, it, well, you know, I am my only fan. Yeah. So there you go. If you go to watchchad.com, there you go. It's the one-stop shop. Leads you to everything, our store, our tour dates. Um, the I, I say our like I'm schizophrenic. Um, you know, the the our podcast, the show on the blaze, my, my news blog, which is chadprather.com, all kind of stuff. Perfect. And then are we right at 58? All right, go ahead and hit the bumper, and then we'll come right back. All right. So I want to finish a little bit of this topic because it ended up, I ended up losing friends or whatever over the, the quote unquote fat shaming. Cause ultimately I think it's insane that we can't talk about stuff like this. So the comments that I got were, how dare you? And I actually, when I was making the TikTok that got all of like 400 views, not even that, you know, whatever. Um, I mean, that's respectable. As, I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. It was, I don't know what, you know what I did? I monetized my TikTok never got a view again. Like I went from getting yeah. tens of thousands. That was the dumbest thing I could do. So don't yeah. monetize your do TikTok. Do not do it. Yeah, it's not worth it. So anyways, um, so I, I even, I'm like, I even have a plus size model friend who I had helped build her brand a little bit. And then she, because she was getting bigger in, in it, and obviously it's a conservative network. And she agreed with our belief system with truth will set you free and be the change. 
She goes, it's my agent said that I can't do it. And I go, I respect that. Got to make money. Go yeah. do what you got to do. Absolutely. And now because I said that this, this is not a, she's like, what if I was on the cover? I go, I'd give you a congratulations, but I don't agree with it. I don't have to agree with something being right. celebrated. And that's the same with pride month. It's the same with all these different things. I am incredibly pro gay. You, everybody gets the right to do what they want. There's a difference between acceptance and celebration. And right. I think that that's what, that's what putting that picture on the top uh, or on the cover of Sports Illustrated, that's what that does. It celebrates obesity and this body positivity movement that is killing people and costing us a fortune. Yeah. In ta- yeah. And, nobody uh, wants to see me in a Speedo. No. Nobody's going to celebrate that. No. Literally nobody. No. They don't want to see that. It's disgusting. Um, and I know that. <laughs> I'm not, I, like, I should be ashamed of myself if I'm putting myself out there. That becomes a parody if I were to do something like that. Why are we putting that out there and glorifying it? It's not. And you're right with the comorbidity thing because if, if COVID is so deadly and so dangerous and you know that it's killing people that, have, that are overweight and it's, they're the people who are most affected, then why, why are you glorifying this thing that we've spent supposedly two years fighting? Right. Why are we doing that? It's hypocritical. Um, and it's, you know, but, you know, it's like I had a friend of mine as an example. I had a friend of mine who's a lesbian. She called me years ago back when Trump made it where they couldn't do gender transitions if you were in the military because people were joining the military in order to get free sex free changes. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so he said, can't do that anymore. And, and people were up in arms. I made a video about it. And I had a friend of mine who's a lesbian. <clears throat> and she called me up. She said, she said, you can't, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. And I said, well, I can. I can talk about that. Yeah. And I said, why do you care? And she said, well, I'm kind of representative of that entire community. I said, mm-hmm. what community? LGBTQ, whatever, LGBT. And, and I said, you're a lesbian. You're just the L. Yeah. You're, no, you're not all the other things. She's like, yeah, but we kind of represent each other. I said, no, you don't. No. You don't. Because right now, if you go to Pride Parade at West Hollywood, the transgenders don't want the transvestites participating because that's an outward expression, whereas they feel like theirs is an inward expression. Right. So they actually philosophically violate one another and don't even like each other, and, yeah. and they feel like they're a threat to one another. So why are you representing it? So I go back to this thing with the, with the overweight thing. You have people who are defending this, saying, listen, that's, that's not your fight. It's really not. You know, again, congratulations. Appreciate you doing it. Glad you did it. Good for you. That's fantastic. But no, wrong, wrong avenue to take in this. Mm -hmm. And then they did it because they know that people see, like, I think at this point they're putting, they're, they're setting shit up so that we have to get canceled. Yeah. Cause they know people like us are going to say something about it. They know some people are going to say something about it. Like spads. You can't say spads anymore. According to Lizzo or according to Lizzo's people, spaz. <laughs> yeah, spaz. You can't use the word spaz. I got yelled. I have, my dad had multiple sclerosis. Mm-hmm. I had to, I don't know why I got invested in this conversation, but I called, <laughs> I said he was handicapped. I said the word handicap. That, and some hater that didn't even know me was like, that's how I know you didn't have a disabled father because you said handicap. I'm like, well, when my dad was alive, I called him handicapped because he called himself handicapped. Yeah. It's handicapped. Yeah, I, I have a right to say handicapped. And I literally got chewed out by this guy. He's like, prove it. I had to send pictures of my dead father because of this woke left, and I shouldn't have. I should have just said F off. But I, I'm like, I want to. Fox wanna, Trot yeah, Oscar. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, how, how, is, how is this the world we live in? And now Lizzo uses it, and they've actually bleeped out. They've, they've like done asterisks on spaz. Yeah. Spaz. And she gave in. She did. She, she gave changed in. the lyrics. Which she doesn't give in to dieting, ever. <laughs> Ever. She's never said no to fried chicken. She's so she's not. She even said yes to that pizza that was too burnt. Do you remember that video yeah. she made when she said it's yeah. too crispy, it's terrible, and she yeah. still continues. She's not turning it down. Nope. No, um, she's not. Look, I had some people who confronted me at a campaign event. I got pretty fired up over that border issue whenever the border patrol agent was on the horse and he was trying to separate that guy out who was abusing women down at the river. And then it became this, oh, look at this horseman. He's whipping this black man and all this kind of stuff. I got pretty fired up. And I called out Kamala Harris, the so-called border czar. And I used, I said, uh, and I'm just going to say it because I'm, I'm a free speech guy. So I said, she's effing retarded, yeah. right? And I had somebody who came to a campaign event. They had their daughter who has downs Mm -hmm. and they said we want you to apologize to her face and i said that ain't happening and they said you use the word i said and i'll use it again it's a legitimate word Mm -hmm. you talk about fire definition you talk about fire retarded and i said and i wasn't talking about a mentally handicapped person in that way i'll use your word handicap uh anthony made me do it the uh I said I was talking about a person who who is full, supposedly fully capable, right. who refuses to do her job, and she's not doing it. And I said I called her what I meant to call her, and they said, "Well, would you say that word to her face?" I said, "No, because I wasn't referring to her." And they said, "And, I, and so the little girl started. She wasn't. Well, she's 19 years old. She started to cry." And I said, "Why is she crying?" 
I said, you've made this an issue in your own household. I said, you've made this a controversial issue. I said, did she watch the video? No, we would never, we know. I said, then why is she crying? She didn't know anything about it. I said, you're the one who made the issue out of this thing. Yeah. I just used a word. You took offense at it. And now I'm supposed to go out there and publicly, they wanted me to go online and apologize for the use of the word. I said, let me explain to you how this thing works. Go to hell. <laughs> Ain't happening. Ain't happening. Now, does that make me a mean person? I, maybe, maybe in that regard. I don't think it does. I use the word. I stand you use by the, the word, word correctly. Yeah, I, I mean, I stand by it, and I, it was an insult. I meant it as an insult. I wasn't talking about a person that's, you know, in some way handicapped, deficient, or mentally deficient in that right. regard. But you have those people who want to come at you in that regard. And it, again, I, I, it's important because, and I've said this for 25 years, so goes language, so goes the culture. You start controlling the language, and you're going to change the culture. So now we have words that don't mean what they should, are supposed to mean anymore. Right. So if I use the word fat, if I use the word retarded, if I use the word handicapped or anything like that, and, and I'm not advocating for using that for the sake of just being mean. I'm just saying, look, we, you have to be able to express yourself with the language that's available to you. That's the only way the ideas in my mind can get into your mind. Right. Is through words. So I'm a, I, I truly believe that political correctness is straight out of the pit of hell. Yeah. Um, it, it is a way to control people. And if you don't abide by the rules, you're going to get canceled. Uh, we're going to control everything from how you do business and whether you have a platform and all of these things. Can cancellation, and this is going to go into our final point, cancellation causes uh, the division we talked about earlier. Right. It, 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 it no longer allows the conversations we used to have, which causes us to completely separate, yeah. which is what makes it so so ridiculously uh, and I, and our hopeless. Family, and I say all the time on stage, I'm like, let's bring back duels. Like, 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 like you, should, you should be able to walk up to somebody, slap them in the face with a glove, and be like, pistols at dawn. It would change this offendedness culture, like, fast. Purge would... I think the purge... I think they're honest. <laughs> one day, screw it. I've got some issues right now that I would love I mean, to have do you realize day. like Andrew Jackson, President Andrew Jackson, they used to have what was called a second. So like if you and I were going to be in a duel and you had a dentist appointment, you couldn't be there, you would appoint a second to go to the duel for you. Now that's tough right there. Like that's, that's when men were effing men. Yeah. Like I'm going to go stand in and get shot at for my buddy Anthony. <laughs> so, so <laughs> when, when Andrew Jackson, he was the second in over 200 duels. I mean, that's that's balls of steel, dude. So like, that's back when people you didn't deal with offendedness the same way. No. And now we got this thin skin culture, beta male, soy boy, whatever it is. You know, men simp, have breasts. Yeah, called the simp. And simp you know, <laughs> incel simps, whatever. Tuck your wiener Somebody month. Called me a simp. Too. Yeah. <laughs> a simp. <laughs> bitch. No, that one argument we had. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and the, and the last thing I'll say on that, like, and, and we've shifted. I've shifted a little bit in my head to the Pride Month, but like people like. And it comes, whether it's obesity or whether it's, uh, no matter what it is, conservative and in terms of homosexuality, his ability to speak to, look, it's just what I do. It's It's got nothing to do with this bigger picture and the way he speaks right. out. And you know conservative ants. I yeah, know. Yeah, just with him in, in Florida. He's fantastic. And, the, and I go, it's people like that that are important to speaking out because, again, they'll look at us and be like, oh, you're hateful, you're, you're racist, or you're and transphobic, I, fat phobic, et cetera. And I'm like, I love everybody. I love everybody. I don't come from a perspective of, oh, I'm going to label you, put you in the box, classify you, put you on the shelf so I don't have to deal with you. Yeah. I love everybody. Yeah. I mean, I've been, my God, I've worked in Hollywood for years, I, you know, writing sitcoms and scripts for, for shows and stuff like that. You go out there and you sit with those folks, you better be pretty understanding of some different lifestyles, Absolutely. Because right? uh, it's, it's out there. My agent, is who is family to me, is a gay Cubano in Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, I, I got a Jewish business manager in LA. I, I, I've got a Hispanic producer, Puerto Rican. I, I've got former television producers that are gay, Hispanic, black, Jamaican, all these different things. I'm the most diverse mr -er you ever met, dude. Yeah, that was a lot, especially, of, especially, lot of microaggressions. Right there. A lot, dude. <laughs> and, I'm like, and I'm like, they just kind of happen that way, you know? Um, but, you know, people see that and they don't realize stuff like that. They, they, they immediately judge you. They hear the words you're saying. And I'm like, no, no, I just want to tell you the truth. At the end of the day, I just want to tell you the truth. I've got a tattoo, right? I've got a lot of tattoos. i got a tattoo right here talking about Greek. NRK, uh it's John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, you know, and it's in the Greek. And, and people are like, why does that matter to you? And I said, because the words matter. The yeah. words, everything, it all starts with the words. If you, if you change the words, you change everything. Uh, and we're seeing that now. We're starting to see that heavily play out in a postmodern um, um, existential society where nothing really has meaning because we've just, it's all lost it.
Suppose. What's a man? What's a woman? I don't know. I'm not a biologist. Again, you see Supreme where that Court goes? Justice, right there. Exactly. You see right where there. that you're, goes? You're, you're, you're eligible. Yeah, it's problematic. So this is the last thing I want to talk about just because it's timely, um, and, and we'll make it quick. I know we only got a couple minutes left. Uh, have you heard this is new news today? I don't know if you're a big sports man. Zach Collier, did you hear the story about the Texas? I haven't heard. I don't think I have. So, Give me so, that whiskey real quick while we're finishing here. I know we got. Oh, yeah. Give me that whiskey little, while we're finishing. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. Keep hey, talking. That Bond Breaker delicious whiskey. Yeah, it's actually really, really good. Okay, so Zach Collier, he's a he's an Aggie, 27 years old, based out of Dallas, Texas. You probably should get him on the show. I want to get him on this, too. Yeah, I'd love to. So I have I have a, a, a specific tie to this. So I used to do the College World Series. I was the, the, the MC for it. I no longer yeah. am doing that, as you can probably see, because I think it starts <laughs> this week. Um, I was canceled for a reason we'll talk about in a second. So Zach Collier, 27 years old. Meanwhile, the NCAA has... Men competing in women's sports. This is their issue. So he is an uh, an Aggie fan. He was singing the national anthem, or he was around for the national anthem at the women's college world series when Texas was playing Oklahoma State. Right afterwards, he did the horns down. Oh wow! Too offensive. He is now canceled from singing the national anthem of Game Nine in the college, men's college world <laughs> series, and he got the letter from the NCAA. This is a whole new level. I mean, the great part about sports is that. It's yeah. a bit like that is part of sports. Yeah. I was actually canceled from the NCAA. I was I got him on a phone call. I actually have it recorded. And I, I didn't think it could get any worse than you got canceled for your political beliefs. COVID happened, event team. They decided to a lot of the older people moved on, the ones that probably had some conservative values. And it was all the young people, which I knew for years. And they could not wait for me to come for the season to come back for men's college basketball, all this stuff. They went dark after I attended January 6th. So I wanted to get them on the phone when they finally said your services are no longer needed. I go, 10 years I've been doing all these events for a cut rate. Like, mm. can we, can I just get an exit interview? Like, I'd like to know kind of what happened. I wanted to record it. Mm. So it was worse than I thought. I thought it was going to be like, well, your politics online were a little too much, which on my personal page, I keep pretty vague. Turns out it was a issue was according, well, I still believe it was the other reason, but they said it was a diversity hire problem. And they wanted to, they had to hire a person of color, was how, I believe how they said it. Are you Italian? I'm Italian then and what's Jewish. What's the problem here? I'm half Jewish too, for God's yeah. sakes. <laughs> so I'm Italian Jew. So it means that I, I, uh, I tip really well, but I hate to pay for parking. So, <laughs> But my shoes are fantastic. My shoes are fantastic. Um, so, so ultimately, this is what they said, and then it got worse. Because this is where I'm like, this is something the NCAA should actually like go did you really just say that they're like well we need to make a diversity higher and we needed to spend less money so we needed somebody that was local i go <laughs> ma'am i've been working as a local because i have a home in, in omaha I go, i've been working as a local for five years i just get paid a certain day rate yeah. so they essentially had to hire a black dude and spend less money on that black dude wow that's the ncaa that doesn't make any sense <laughs> I mean, it does. It doesn't have to make that. I mean, it, right, based yeah. on their logic. Their I mean, logic. That, that's a world that grew up with common core math, too. I mean, but it, it, I get it, but no. That's, that's the thing. That's what happens when the woke mob comes. Just the cancel culture of today's day and age. It's absolutely absurd. I'm still trying to wrap my head around why putting the horns down is, a, is an offensive thing. I mean, that's... They that's, said it was unsportsmanlike. It's Red, uh, River, River, Red River rivalry. I mean, that's, right. that's the tradition. Right. You know? I just, I don't know. That one to me is like... We, we've lost, we have absolutely lost our mind. Now, it yeah. finally got picked up, like Sports Illustrated and all them, and, and people are in the comments saying, like, this is absolutely silly. Yeah. But I, uh, it's, it, Obviously, we know, you know, I had Dennis Miller on my show years ago, and Dennis, I love Dennis's comedy, and he's a smart guy, and he, he kind of got marginalized in a lot of ways because of his political viewpoints. And, and he's like, you know, I don't have to leave the house anymore. I got enough money. I don't have to go out and put up people's garbage, you know. I don't have to deal yeah. with all this kind of stuff. But he made a good point about sports. He said, you know, because he did Monday Night Football for a season, which right. I thought was great. He was fantastic. And uh, he said, you know, it used to be about gladiators. You know, you strapped it on, you went off and went out and knocked each other's heads off. We're you know? strapping it on a lot this month. That's a different Yeah, story. and he's like, you know, you got girls that aren't really wearing much clothes on the sidelines, cheering and kicking their legs right. up, and people are like, yeah, kill each other, that kind of stuff. And he goes, now, you know, everything, the rules, you can't hit the quarterback a certain way. Everybody's protected. There's, you know, flags on every play. Um, you know, and then now you got the kneeling and you got the, all of this different stuff, you know, end racism on the back of the helmets and in the back of the end zone and everything has to be a political move. Yeah. Everything has to be a political move. Uh, so you get to a point where it's like, God, everything, everything precious from our governmental institutions, uh, all the way down to the things, our cultural institutions like sports, we've lost it. It's gone. Yeah. It's done. We've lost it to the woke mob.
And it's like that whole, it's the, the, the Seinfeld episode. You, you don't want to wear the ribbon, then you get canceled. Yeah, you don't want to wear the ribbon? You got to wear the ribbon. Got to wear the ribbon. So Got to wear the ribbon, Jerry. This is going to be, <laughs> you got to wear the ribbon, Jerry. This is our last shot. I added another segment. <laughs> last shot. Uh, what's your final words? Anything you could say as we as we wrap up this episode? Uh, you First know what? I, I, I do. I encourage people. I say, you know, everywhere I go, I'm like, love each other. I said, you cut somebody. I don't care if you disagree with them. They're going to bleed their own version of red, white, and blue, right? They have their version of patriotism that's out there. And I always say that with with the last vestige of hope that we do have a, a, a way of coming back together. My friend Riaz Patel, who is a um, Pakistani-born Muslim, he's a gay Hollywood producer, two-time Emmy uh, nominee, um, you know, he and his husband have two children. They were surrogates for unborn babies. I don't agree with that. Even Stephen Crowder and his husband, I'm not Stephen Crowder. No. <laughs> whoa, Stephen whoa. Crowder's not now gay. Now he's throwing shots. He's throwing Steve, real shots. Stephen Crowder's not gay. Dave Rubin, my friend, Dave Rubin's my friend as well. You know, Dave Rubin and his husband, David, you know, it's surrogate. I don't agree with that. I yeah. don't agree with that. He knows. I've talked, looked at him face to face and said, you know, I don't agree with that. I love you. Yeah. But I don't agree with what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Riaz was, Riaz was on my show recently. He's a liberal. He started this thing, uh, which is great. He gets people together in a room, and you go city to city, and it's almost like a, a show. It's like you're filming a television show, and you get people from other sides talking to each other, mm -hmm. just communicating, and you realize we're not that different. Yeah, ideologically, we may have some separations, but you realize, you know, I'm not ready to pull my knife out and cut you just yet. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. I encourage people to have a dialogue. Talk to people that, you know, I love what Elon Musk said, you know, freedom of speech is hearing something that you don't like from somebody you don't like. Yeah. And I agree with that. I think there's, there's some wisdom in that. Yeah. Um, so I just encourage people, have the discussion. And you're doing a good thing. I, you know, I told you, I texted you the other day, I said, you're good at doing what you do. Not everybody is. I don't think everybody should have a podcast. <laughs> you're good at doing what you do, and I'm glad you are. And I like the, the blunt force discussion. I think that's a key to everything you're a BFD. in the future. You're a big effing deal. Yeah, I am a big effing deal. <laughs> I, I keep telling myself that. I, I try to tell my mother on the phone. She doesn't believe it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. This episode is done. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank Chad. Thank you for being here. Thank Mo, you. Mo and, and Kelly, my girlfriend, thank you for being here as well. Joe, you did a bang up job on, on what was a first episode of me not even knowing where to look to start. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the conversations uh, in terms of when you, it was, it started out with the concept of blunt force logic. And when it was blunt force logic, I, I realized that in this country, we don't have hard conversations and we don't think logically. So it started with that. And then I realized it's great to have a conversation and hopefully I can continue to have great guests like Chad on this show and conversations a lot like this and realize that at the end of the day we all are looking to be that center of the bird we don't need to be the wings find a way to be the center of the bird continue to have the conversations it's not hopeless like I said earlier about the the girl that I had helped a lot out that apparently got offended by some of my comments I got yelled at by her <laughs> husband that she didn't like by the way <laughs> And then I got blocked. And this is, that is not a way to deal with anything. Because I would love to have the conversation with her. I am proud of people that have made it no matter what their body type is, their sexuality, their whatever the heck. But at the end of the day, we are able to have a conversation and we should be able to have a conversation. And that's the only way we can possibly be the change. Continue to follow this. Make sure you check out the, uh, the Bond Breaker Whiskey, the Slow River Blend. Um, and and uh, that'll be hopefully the new segment on a lot of these. Next week, oh, last thing. Next week, we've got... Uh, uh, one of the one of the original almost principles essentially of the company Monet. I've been using this shampoo. I know you're a little bit balding as well. I 100%. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Look, yeah. Chad's head. Yep. So thing. we are we are. Uh, I'm 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 too. Uh, t okay, just real quick. I am two hair transplants in, but we're gonna have uh, um, we're gonna have Tony Van's on or Tony Van Schoik. She is the guest next week uh, on Blunt Force Discussion. Thank you so much for joining, and uh, to everybody out there, appreciate you. Have a great day. We'll